for the people who have not read your book, I'm, I'm sure they'd all be fascinated with just the very quick snippet of how the idea of Netflix came about. Um, I was working for a large software company and we were going to be acquired. Uh, and as part of the merger, I was going to lose my job. Uh, but it was uh, one of those good types of lose your job where they say, you've got to come to work for six months. We're going to pay you. When I realized I had this six month period, I said, this is the perfect opportunity to start the next company. This company that was being sold was uh, had been founded and was being run by a gentleman named Reed Hastings. So we came to an agreement that he'd be my angel investor. He'd be the chair of the board. We'd come up with an idea together. I would start and run the company and off we go. And the way it would work is every day we would stop by the house and pick me up to drive to work. It was a commute of about 45 minutes. And I'd get in the car and I'd go, okay, Reed, I've got another one. Personalized shampoo. And Reed would just sit there. He'd be looking out the window. And then finally he'd turn and go, that will never work. We would argue for the entire way to work. And in fact, one of the ideas I pitched him was video rental by mail. Here's the important part about the story. We did not then go to the office and begin working on a business plan. Instead, we said, let's figure out whether this is actually a good idea or not. And we turned the car around mid-commute, bought a little gift envelope, put the CD in the envelope and mailed it to Reed's house. And the next morning when he picked me up, before I could land with my next pitch, he just held up this little envelope with an unbroken CD in it that had gotten to his house in less than 24 hours for the price of a postage stamp. I think uh, that might have been in the moment we said this actually might work. How important was it to have someone like Reed by your side doing the give and take? On one hand, um, I believe there's no reason why if you have an idea, you shouldn't go for it. But for me, especially having someone there to bounce ideas off of is hugely valuable. The data suggests pretty strongly that the most stable configuration for entrepreneurs is to have two co-founders uh, or more. And the reason is simple. Number one, you get really two for the price of one. Number two, being an entrepreneur is a lonely profession. And it really helps to have someone who is there by your side who understands what you're going through. An entrepreneur takes a number of personal risks. They have a financial risk in most cases. There's a reputational risk. How did you, you know, think about those types of, of personal risks? I was never a person who was saying, let's see, I can be an accountant. Those predictable lifestyles never appealed to me. I was always willing to try things and take chances on things. Um, I was just incredibly lucky that you could actually make a living at it. I thought one of the best lines in your book was at the end of chapter five. You had gone to your mother um, and you had asked her for some money and she decided to give it to you. Last two lines say, I almost wish she had said no, because now I actually had to do something. When you've taken other people's money, um, it's very, very different responsibility because now failing is not just you. It's a much bigger thing that does have a way of driving you, of saying, I have to get this um, to work. You're looking at a, a big idea of someone else. Do you look more at what the idea is itself or do you look at the team? Well, yeah, I have, I have my the top three things I think are important. And number one is the team. Uh, number two is the team. And then number three is the team. I view the idea as a starting point. I know no successful companies who became successful doing the very first thing that was their original idea. It's what happens after you start that makes all the difference. You have this great idea and in your mind, oh my gosh, it's gonna be incredible. You can picture it when you have 10 million users and when it has 10 million users, just think of all the, and I don't wanna hear that crap. I wanna hear how are you gonna get user number one? And how are you gonna get user number two and three? I want you to scale it way, way down and figure out how you're gonna to start tomorrow. No one cares about the imagine if you will. What they want you to say is, I've been doing this myself. It's not repeatable, it's not scalable, but I know that it works. I know what my average order size, I know my repeat rate, I know my lifetime value. I'm going out of my mind because I'm doing this manually and I'm looking for money to take the idea of demonstrated works and scale it.